Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I've been meaning to do a video of how to process these 3D printed dentures. So this is a set of dentures for a, a patient that was recently seen. Um, and we've 3D printed the dentures. You can see that the bases have been printed in pink resin, the teeth all in a, a single tooth chain in white. Um, and so now we're ready to bond these up. And so I'm just gonna go through in this video what my bonding protocol is. It is certainly not the only way of doing it. Uh, but it's one that has worked well for me. <clears throat> and basically what I'm doing in this process is I'm just using the same uh, denture resin that I uh, printed the denture base out of. I'm using that more or less like a cement so that I can uh, bond things together. So the starting point is place some bonding agent. Um, there's a number of bonding agents that will work. This is the one that I like. It's called Bond LC from Anax Dent. The reason I like this one is that it bonds to a lot of different materials uh, really well because this is the material that's indicated for uh, bonding gingival composite to things like PMMA bases. So it, it really has a good bond to both of those. So, you know, usually get yourself a little dappin dish or something. Um, I'm going to do it the lazy man's way and just slop a little bit on and then spread this out really well. And you'll notice that with my bonding agent, I am going out beyond just the socket itself because you will have some squish out of this material. And when you do, you want that to bond well to the surrounding uh, base structure so that everything is in there really nice and tight. So don't be stingy with it. Go out a little bit beyond your sockets. We'll do the same thing now with the uh, the teeth. And this tends to use a good bit of bonding agent, which is why I usually just do it that way. It's faster. Once again on the teeth, I fully expect that there will be some overrun and this will go up on the facial and lingual and definitely the interproximal surfaces. So use enough that you get around to all of those surfaces. Once you've done that, you need to cure this. And you know, this is a, a slow process if you have to sit here with a, a tiny little curing light and tack every one of those teeth from multiple surfaces for 10 seconds. Um, this is a light that I just got off of, I think it was off Amazon. 50 bucks uh, for this, but one of the unique things it came with I wasn't even expecting was this tip for, it's supposed to be for uh, whitening your teeth, but I found that it's really useful for just covering broad areas at once. So we can really spread this out over a, a broad region when we're doing things like dentures and there's lots of spaces to cure. So I'm gonna come in here from the occlusal, I'm gonna do 10 seconds, um, basically on each quadrant Okay, so we've used the bonding agent and now we're ready to begin the actual bonding process. And once again, I simply use the same pink resin that we printed the base out of. So I, I usually just get a dappin dish full of this stuff and I'm going to put this right into the socket. And once again, I want to make sure that there's no areas that are starved for resin that are going to end up, you know, being a weak spot in the, the overall bond. So I'm pretty generous with this. Any of it that extrudes out beyond the socket, uh, we'll, we'll take a paintbrush and kind of taper it in and it will actually become part of our polishing process because that excess resin is how we polish these 3D printed dentures as well. So I've got that done. Now before the resin all wants to run out, we take the tooth chain and we're going to squish everything together. And here again, you'll see this is where the excess resin comes out. I don't want a bunch of excess pink up on my teeth, so I'm going to take my paintbrush and drag that down off the teeth. And I'll just use my glove to get rid of any excess. Now this can be where it's useful. I don't want to have to sit here and hold this thing sandwiched together really tight to uh, keep everything in place. This is where it can be useful to go back to your small tip 
And once you get an area the way you like it, just go in and do a quick tack of that small area to keep everything held together. And then just freeze your hands up a little bit. So I'm in particular going interproximal and dragging all of that excess out. What can happen very easily because this stuff is so flowable is that if you let it pool in a bunch of places, you end up with this overglazed kind of lifeless restoration. We don't want to end up with that. So go in and you know use your excess to smooth out borders and to uh, to get this thing highly polished, but don't go crazy and let it pool everywhere. So I'm not trying to do a 100% cure right now. I'm basically just trying to tack buckle surfaces to free up my hands so that I can quit having to hold this thing together. And now let's come over to this side. Again, by virtue of using that small curing tip, all of this is still wet and is not cured, which is what we want. We want to be able to polish up on that before going to the final cure. black fleck. One of the things you'll find when you do these 3D printed dentures is any little speck of dust you have in your work area, I can about guarantee you is going to find your, its way into your denture surface. So work with gloves, work on a clean surface, um, and hopefully avoid any of those issues. Alright, so my buckle surfaces are tacked in. I'm going to just kind of briefly hit all of this buckle surface where we've run the excess um, to polish it. And again, I know I could spend a lot more time curing, but this is going to go back into the cure box before finalizing this. Okay, again, by virtue of using the small tip, we should not have a bunch of excess on the lingual. So let's go back into the lingual, do the exact same thing feather out any excess resin and drag it down onto your base to somewhat polish it. Okay, so the teeth are now bonded in. Uh, they will go through another final cure before finishing this, but at this point, everything should be stable enough that I can remove the supports. Don't remove your supports until this part, though, because if you've removed your supports uh, before this, then you're going to be dealing with individual teeth, which makes them so much harder to handle. So wait until your teeth are bonded in to go and do that. All right, that's looking nice. Now look at your teeth really well. You can now polish your teeth. Now, it's my recommendation to not do any polishing or adding of material on your occlusal surfaces because there's just no way to avoid it pooling up and just turning your anatomy into just a smooth piece of glass as it will decrease the patient's chewing efficiency. So my recommendation would be to only do this on the facial surface. And I'm also really, I try to make an effort to not get interproximal very much because once again I want to avoid pooling. Okay so once I've done that I'm going to starve the brush of resin and then go back and really wipe off excess particularly interproximal and then we can cure that.
wipe off the excess, feather it out, and cure it. Now this would also be the stage that if you wanted to really get fancy pants and put on, um, you know, stains, I use the, the GC uh, stains, you could add those here, you could give, you know, translucency effects and all kinds of stuff, stains in the occlusal grooves. I generally don't do that because most often if you're doing a 3D printed denture, you're doing it because uh, you're looking for a more economical option and you're not trying to do a you know a highly characterized denture you're just trying to do something that looks nice is affordable and that gets the patient some teeth so that is certainly an option if you want to do it um, but usually that in my experience is, is reserved for a really high-end customized denture Now, we could remove the base. This would be easier if I had some snippers. All right, so we twisted that off, that out of my resin. Now, normally I would come back and uh, take this over to well, actually, normally I would print this standing up so that I had no supports to remove inside of this. But for demonstration purposes, it made this a bit easier to handle um, printed this way. So generally, if you printed it that way, you should go in now and really clean these out. Make sure that, you know, if you take a gauze and run it through here, there's nothing that grabs the internal of this. Let's pretend I've done that. <laughs> I've not done that. But you're going to also need to... Um, do a tiny bit of polishing on the internal surface of the denture, right? Because it's still going to have the 3D printing uh, resin lines. And so I do the same thing, again, very light coats. The goal, if, you know, if you look at the, uh, the 3D printing lines, they look like a little terraced effect. The goal with this is just to fill out the valleys between those, uh, those little terrace lines. So super thin and then cure it quick before any of it has time to pool. Okay, so I'm just tacking this into place. <clears throat> and I suppose if this was a short-term denture, you can skip this step. Um, or if it's just a backup denture. But you know, if the patient's gonna be wearing this long-term, those little terrace lines and the roughness that it creates would be a magnet for staining, for plaque accumulation, so we don't want to do that. We want to really get this a nice glossy finished surface. All right, now the last thing I would do is with this cured, I would really look my denture over, get it clean, had some broken supports there on it. And any remaining rough spots that you see, this is the time to add just a bit more gloss coat. I'm staying off of the teeth. And now I'm gonna go back to my really wide tip. All right, we have a 90% finished denture. Uh, most of the, the ridges have been taken out of this. Um, this would now go into the cure box and I would run at the final uh, full curing cycle, which is 60 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius. Um, and that will get this up to its final hardness. Um, you might also, if you want it to be really, really safe, since this is a light cure only material, if you're concerned that light didn't get all the way under the teeth. I would come in and maybe do each tooth 10 seconds from the underside of this. Okay, just making sure that everything is really well cured together. Now, it's not worth you watching me uh, 
talk through this again. So what I'm going to do is, is now do the upper one, and I'll time lapse this just so that you don't have to sit around and watch it. Uh, but it's the exact same process, so bonding agent. Okay, I'm having trouble breaking off that top. But in essence, you can see uh, you know, how this thing has turned out. Still need to cut off a few little sprues, uh, like right there. But this is the, the final dentures. They just need to go into the uh, cure box for their, their final overall cure. And then the last thing I would do once that has been done is that, um, I, actually, after it's run about 30 minutes, I would take some uh, glycerin, some KY jelly, something like that, and put it all over this uh, to cover the um, oxygen inhibited layer. That's going to give it its nice final hard cure without leaving any tacky surface. And then the last thing I would do is once all that comes out, I'd take it all off and uh, you could either pumice it with a really, really fine pumice, being careful not to overdo it and uh, destroy your anatomy. Uh, something else that works really well is just to get a small dish and put some mineral oil and really fine pumice in it, and you can just pumice that out with a Robinson brush or a rag wheel. Um, that works really well as uh, well. So that's uh, my overall process for doing 3D printed dentures. And you know, personally, it, it may be monolithic in color, but once you've got this, um, I think they're a really nice looking denture. Most people in my experience want toilet bowl white anyway. And this is, uh, this is pretty much that. And uh, the fit is excellent with these because there's no shrinkage like there is in heat process dentures. So I really think this is a, a great option. And then if you want to dress it up even further, there's always the gingival composites. I use the Annex gum composites, so there's flowables. Um, you can even buy them in the big gun cartridges like this. And you can get as fancy with these as you want. I mean, you literally can make this thing look like a top-notch, uh, denture that just would almost fool you for natural teeth. Um, again, it's just a matter of how much time and effort you want to put into it. But that's basically the end of this, so I'm going to go throw these into the cure box.